Hello, and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council's Standing Committee's meeting for Wednesday, May 15th, 2019. My name is Kim Clark Baskin, and I'm your Deputy City Clerk. With us today, we have our sign language interpreter, David Tatro. The following is a list of legislation up for preliminary approval by Pittsburgh City Council. Finance and Law Committee, Reverend Burgess is the chair. We have a new paper, Bill Number 1635. Resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in the amount of $7,700 to Davenport and Company, LLC, for professional consulting services in relation to police arbitration. Bill Number 1636. Resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in the amount of $16,350 to MAS Financial Advisory Services, LLC, for professional consulting services in relation to police arbitration. Public Works Committee, Mrs. Kel Smith is the chair. We have a deferred paper, Bill Number 1603. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works to enter into a professional services agreement between the City of Pittsburgh and Winston Design Development for architectural and engineering design services for a series of interior remodels for six fire stations within the City of Pittsburgh, cost not to exceed $400 $7,872.66. We have bill number 1637, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Parks and the Department of Public Works to enter into a lease agreement with the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater for a portion of real property located on Liberty Avenue between 29th and 30th Street. Bill number 1638, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works to enter into a professional services agreement between the city of Pittsburgh and Fafman and Associates for historic preservation architect consultation services for the Oliver Bath House at 38 South 10th Street, cost not to exceed $44,990. Bill number 1640, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure on behalf of the city of Pittsburgh to enter into a professional services agreement with the consultant, Eileen Papali, as a sole source to provide instruction to new staff of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure, cost not to exceed $15,000. Bill number 1641, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to execute relevant agreements to receive grant funding from the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation to provide support for the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to build upon existing autonomous vehicles, testing and a planned autonomous deployment by expanding public and neighborhood engagement efforts regarding how autonomous vehicles are deployed and managed, and further providing for an agreement and expenditures at a total cost not to exceed $410,539 for this stated purpose. Bill number 1642, resolution providing for a contract or use of existing contracts and or agreements, planning, design, repairs, maintenance, improvements, emergencies, operations, and or the purchase of materials, supplies, and equipment in connection with the production of the Hill District Mobility Network 
and parking management plan and associated projects. Land Use and Economic Development Committee, Ms. Gross is the chair, we have a deferred paper, Bill Number 1492, Resolution Approving a Conditional Use Application under the Pittsburgh Code, Title IX, Zoning, Article 5, Chapter 911.2, Section 911.02.A.64 for West Liberty Elementary School for authorization to expand an elementary secondary school at 785 Dunster Street, zoned R1DM, residential single unit detached, moderate density district, 19th Ward, 4th Council District. The public hearing for this bill was held on May 8th. Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management Committee, Mrs. Strasberger is the chair. We have a new paper, Bill Number 1639. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure and or the Department of Innovation and Performance on behalf of the city to enter into an agreement with various entities in order to receive data sets or access to data sets or visualization platforms that further the city's ability to deliver services to its residents. Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, Mr. O'Connor is the chair. We have a deferred paper, bill number 2018-0983. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Finance to execute a quick claim deed or deeds and any other necessary or appropriate documents, agreements, and instruments, conveying as is all of the city's right, title, and interests, if any, in designated city-owned properties to the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh for consideration of $1 each, contingent upon the mayor and the director of the Department of Finance first entering into a cooperation agreement with the URA, setting forth the rights and obligations of the city and the URA relating to these initial conveyances, and further setting forth the rights and obligations of the city and the URA relating to the subsequent disposition of these properties to third parties. Bill number 1621, resolution authorizing the mayor, the Office of Management and Budget, and the Department of Public Works to enter into a professional services agreement with the Oxford Development Company to serve as property manager for 412 Boulevard of the Allies. Hearings Committee, Council President Bruce Krause is the chair, bill number 1644. Resolution appointing Theodore R. Lohner as a commissioner of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission of the City of Pittsburgh for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. That concludes the reading of the legislation up for preliminary approval. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Standing Committee meeting of Pittsburgh City Council for today, Wednesday, May 15th, 2019. I'm Councilman Krause. Councilman Burgess will be out to chair the meeting shortly. Our first order of business will be public comment. Anyone wishing to speak before City Council, of course, will have three minutes in which to do so. I would like to take this time to remind everyone here that our rules of council are clear when they state that comment is limited to matters of concern, official action or deliberation, which are or may come before this council at another time. We do not permit profanity and we will maintain order at all times. We ask that you would please begin by giving your name and the neighborhood in which you reside for our public record. 
The green light will indicate the start of your three minutes. When the yellow light comes on, you'll have one minute to summarize your thoughts. When the red light comes on, your time will have expired. Good morning, Dr. Miller. Good morning, um, Dr. Ronald N. Miller, um, West End in Pittsburgh and Washington, D.C. Um, I'm the Global Intelligence Society candidate for President of the United States. You can reach me at 412-969-7997-247. Um, about a month ago or so, I requested that all of you provide your housing listings, publish them. As far as I know, you haven't done that. So we're going to do that. We're going to publish them, uh, maybe not before the 21st, but we're going to do that. Um, you know, the vote on the 21st provides the voter with no receipt for whom the person voted. And I view that as a fraud. And our, our approach is to take that to the U.S. Supreme Court in the fall uh, of this year. I did so in 2016, but we have a more refined citizen's brief that we're taking to, to that court. Um, now, I mentioned a couple of times that I've been to Israel. Um, Mr. O'Connor, have you been to Israel? Well, you know, after all the hoo-ha next week, why don't you take, take a few days? We'll go, OK? All right? And we'll go to Jerusalem. And um, you know, that's the capital of the state of Israel. And for many Palestinians, it's the hopeful future, if not present capital of Palestine. But you know, if you ride a bus in um, Jerusalem, um, just be prepared for that. Um, there's an IDF officer on the bus. And that IDF, the Israel Defense Force, um, the officer has a machine gun and is visible. So uh, I was really shocked at it, but I understand that you're really opposed to the proliferation of guns for obvious reasons. But one of the ways that Israel solves this problem is that. And it is not like you, you don't have a choice. You, you, right there, there's the IDF officer and there's the gun. And it's not just a little thing, it is a machine gun. Um, I think that if the two-state solution, is the one I prefer, is put into place, it will reduce the opportunity for uh, Syria to be a place for terrorism directed at Israel and others. Uh, same for Iran. Um, Palestinians have gotten a couple of million dollars from the U.S. government over the last 40 years, but since the Camp David Accords, um, Israel has gotten nearly $100 billion. See, is Israel, as much as I appreciate so much about it, is a welfare state. So in desperation, Palestinians turn to Syria, they turn to Iran, and behind that, they turn to Russia. See, So two-state solution is what I prefer, and I think it will change a lot in the constructive way for the people there. Thank you, Dr. Miller. May we have our next speaker, please? Okay. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Clifford Christian, 1926 West Avenue in the Hill District. The issue that I have is, and Mr. Lavelle pretty much knows, that uh, the city of Pittsburgh Housing Authority demolishes property, but the thing that they don't do is they don't protect the homeowners once they demolish the property. In my instance, uh, and I've talked to Mr. Lavelle about this, and I've sent him various photos of what has happened to my property. They are destroying buildings, but the people that decide to stay, they are tearing out the firewalls that keep the water out of their basements. So when you dig the firewalls out, the water comes into your basement, it ruins, I have a completely refurbished basement and I had to cut four foot of drywall around my whole perimeter of my basement because I can't get Mr. Lavelle to force this issue with the city, with the housing authority. If I can't get the lots cut because they don't feel as though they, they have to do this. So, and I'm not the only one in this situation. There's a lot of people that are, their properties are being destroyed because the contractor comes in and tears down property that's adjacent, that has a firewall. And when you tear the firewall down to the bottom of the foundation, when it rains, you, the water gets so saturated, it has nowhere to go. And most of these uh, buildings, are made of, of, uh, of uh, sandstone. Sandstone sucks water as much as it can until it's ready to release it. 
I have photos on my phone. I've sent them, no help. I've sent them to you. I've asked you to help me, but you know, I've gotten no help out of the situation. So I'm trying to figure out why do I have to sue the city, the housing authorities? Why do I have to sue them to get them to come in and fix my situation that they created? They pushed my wall in on my first floor, but I can't get it done because everybody's telling me I got to sue somebody. I don't have suing money. I'm not a lawyer. I get no help because I need help, but I don't get any help. And this isn't just happening to me. This has happened to a, quite a few people in the Hill District. So my question to is, what's the remedy? <laughs> I just want a remedy. That's all I'm asking for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, may we have our next speaker, please? That's okay. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Hi, my name is Ziggy Edwards, and I live in the run. First, I want to thank you all for listening to me today, and I sincerely hope you actually consider what I have to say. Last time I stood in front of City Council, you were about to approve capital budget funding for the highly problematic Mon Oakland Connector. One of the things I said that day is, your vote on this issue will be a public record of whose interests you represent. Today I'm back to talk about the $410,000 Knight Foundation grant you are about to accept. That's a huge chunk of money, all directed at teaching residents about autonomous vehicles. And it's no coincidence that the deep engagement targets residents of Hazelwood, Greenfield, and Glen Hazel, who just happen to live in the path of the proposed Mon Oakland connector. This is not community involvement. Completely missing from this picture are public accountability and decision making about solutions for our communities. This looks more like a marketing campaign, a desperate attempt at image control. If the Mon Oakland Connector truly benefited those of us who live in the communities it affects, the city wouldn't need so much help selling the idea. The cost just for the roadway infrastructure for this plan is projected at $23 million, as you all know. Operating costs per passenger for microtransit tend to be extremely high on top of that. Part of the reason we're not sold on the plan is that it directs a high amount of scarce resources to what is essentially a luxury transportation project for universities and developers. You're not going to be able to convince our communities we need the Mon Oakland connector. Yeah, sure. We are well aware of what we need. For years, in some cases decades, we've been asking for the straightforward transportation and safety improvements we need, such as sidewalks on the hazardous city-owned parcels along Irvine Street, weekend service on the 93 bus shelters, and traffic calming speed humps, just to name a few. Fixing every single one of those critical problems probably wouldn't approach $23 million. We refuse to be a sacrifice zone for the development of Hazelwood Green and treat it as guinea pigs for an unproven technology using a road that would permanently degrade Panther Hollow, The Run, and Shenley Park. The proposed route raises questions about housing speculation and resident displacement. On top of that, the road may undermine desperately needed water and sewer remediation work. Yet city officials continue to dismiss our concerns in their undemocratic, single-minded pursuit of development. They won't listen to us because their plan is for us to go away. It's not autonomous vehicle technology that has us scratching our heads. It's the city's disregard for our neighborhoods and public parks. Allegheny County Executive Rich Fitzgerald told my neighbor regarding the Mon Oakland connector, this isn't for you, this is for the universities to get down to the Hazelwood Green plan. In other words, it's not for us, it's against us. The Mon Oakland connector plan is wrong, and spending $410,000, regardless of where it came from, to prop it up is a shame and a colossal waste of money. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Laura Weens. I'm the director of Pittsburghers for Public Transit. I'm at 7731 Edgerton Avenue, uh, Pittsburgh 15221. Um, I'll start by quoting a New York Times article from 2016 about Pittsburgh inviting AV testing. The article reads, so with the world watching, what has the city of 306,000 done to prepare for Uber's unprecedented test? The answer is not much. There have been no public service announcements or demonstrations of the technology. Except the mayor and one police official, no other top city leader has seen a self-driving Uber vehicle operate up close. Mayor Bill Peduto said, quote, it is not our role to throw up regulations or limit companies like Uber. You can either put up the red tape or roll out the red carpet. You can guess which path we've taken. And what a red carpet, huh? 
For the last three years, we've had five autonomous vehicle companies using our public roadways as a test track without regulatory frameworks, with no revenue for the city and no data sharing agreements in place. And in those three years, the city hasn't hosted a single frank conversation with residents about the implications of AVs, how they threaten 10 million jobs in the US with no just transition plan, how in the best case scenario, they will only improve pedestrian safety and provide any environmental benefit 30 years down the road, and in the meanwhile, will likely cause greater harm, how AVs will exacerbate urban sprawl and mobility inequities for low-income riders and riders with disabilities, how their business model is predicated on data sharing, on rider movement and advertising. And I'll say that Alyssa um, Grishman was going to speak today but is feeling too unwell to be able to be here about how her concerns around inaccessibilities of autonomous vehicles. And so in the midst of this extraordinary opportunity for companies to test their unproven technology with impunity, Domi rolls out yet another red carpet, this one at a cost of 23 million taxpayer dollars just for the roadway infrastructure of the Mon Oakland connector. And that doesn't account for the countless hours of city staff time and the staggering cost per ride that will be incurred in operating, as Ziggy just mentioned. Um, we know that $23 million could be used directly for improvements for safety and uh, transportation for the communities along this Mon Oakland connector route. How do we know that and what residents actually want? The Greater Hazelwood Initiative Community Survey talks about what they want, and what they want are um, maintenance of existing roads, 80% of the residents said that. Um, improved and expanded bus service, 70% of the residents said that, right? They're not looking for, a, a, expensive solutions or, or, or difficult things to implement. Pittsburgh is supposedly all in for equitable development. If we are heavily subsidizing a so-called public transit solution, why would it be for a short-term luxury service that will principally serve academics and developers? Why wouldn't we instead provide a long-term sustainable transit solution for our most mobility disenfranchised residents? And I'll say this about the Knight Foundation grant, we at PPT strongly believe in democratic public processes and engaging residents about issues and solutions. But beginning from a framework of educating residents is PR work, not in community engagement. Let AV companies look out for their own interests. The city should be invested in looking out for ours. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name's Melanie Ramsey. I live in Wilkins Township. It's outside on the um, outer side of uh, Pittsburgh. And I'm here because I have a circumstance which is very unusual. I wrote up an idea, but I made a mistake as a writer. This was the first time I'd ever gone public to the public. And um, I put it under my boss's name. He helped me with some of it, but I did most of, about 80% of the work. It was published for Kaufman's. I wrote Be a Lucky Winner in our $10,000 shopping spree. Be one of 10 lucky winners in our $10,000 shopping spree. I quoted that to my boss. And instead of being thankful, he said, I'm gonna bomb you, blackball you, fire you, and terrorize you. And he fired me and I didn't have much of a job for 29 years. And it, it's a shame, and I'm here because you can't do anything about Kaufman's, but you can do something about Macy's. They have 143,000 employees. Why not go, I had prayed about this, why not go with the other ideas that I can recommend to the head council person? I have, um, documentation and I'd like to give it to them. Thank you. You're welcome. Next speaker, please. Sorry. Excuse me. Okay, my name is Yvonne F. Brown. I live in the Hill District. I wanted to start off first though, because you're talking about transportation. Um the, the uh, young man that spoke about that's happening up in the hill, I told you. I told Mr. Lavelle that around the West Funeral Home, they said there's a, a, there's, there's a, a sinkhole. Uh, yes, I told you that. See, um, the problem is this. We live at the top of the hill for the bus people. We live at the top of the hill 
And in order for the citizens to go to the hospital, mercy at the bottom, they must take two buses. But yet and still, Mayor, Mayor uh, Perduto, I thought I seen a van for the uh, uh, for a veteran for 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 the, for the dog. Did you get a van for the dogs? Plus, you have a, a green, a blue line that if they come in here to Pittsburgh, they can shop. They don't have to stay in here. They only have to walk. But we've got somebody sick, the elders sick, and and the first thing they say is access. Those those tickets cost money. Okay, now I, I have so much to say. Listen, I usually don't endorse, but this is one time I must. You know that Patik is running. Well, Patik is getting a little too chummy with the police, and I say that. At one time, I praised him. I saw him in court, and he was very fear. But, but then again, that's a white, a white woman. When um, I went to court before him, I want you to understand the reason why I'm saying this, because maybe a young person, they end up with, I still got a record, I still got a felony on me. I mean, I got a charge. Because when I took my thing in, he said, you don't have your personal computer? I don't have my personal computer. There's a machine back there, and it probably wouldn't even work. He didn't even show it. He didn't show it. And when he asked me why did I bite her like that, she was choking me. I couldn't breathe. Even her witness said when she grabbed Miss Brown and was choking her, she said she kept choking her. She said, my God, there's going to be a killing. I thought I was dying, and she, her witness thought so, too, and he threw it out. I'm saying to him, in particular, if you're listening, I say, right don't wrong nobody. If you were right, I would stick by you, but you cannot be in that position and be where you can take a young person's life. I'm 72. My life is almost over, but if you had did a young man the way you did me, he might have went to jail. Even though I almost died, I was being killed. Now, also, Sapella, Sapella, is Sapella watching? I want you to remember how when I went to you, when Dominic said I could not have an inquest, and I said to you, let, don't let my son die like a dog. Do you remember kissing me on my head? I remember being wet, and I said, I hope it ain't a kiss of betrayal, and you did. You did. My son never had an inquest, never. And Mr. Burgess didn't help either. You helped the police. You are one of them too. Next speaker, please. Oh, no, I wasn't yeah. an Can we go first. online and take Mike Lee since my director is the only one here? That's fine, whatever you want. All right, um, that takes us to roll call. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Coghill. Here. Mrs. Gross? Here. Mrs. Harris? Here. President Krause? Here. Mr. Lavelle? Here. Mr. O'Connor? Here. Mrs. Kel Smith? Here. Reverend Burgess? Here. Eight members present. Thank you very much. We are going to go out of order at request of Councilwoman Smith. We're going to take her committee first, page four. Public Works Committee, Ms. Kel Smith is the chair. We have a deferred paper. Bill 1603, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Public Works to enter into a professional services agreement between the city and the Winston Design Development for Architectural and Engineering Design Services for a series of interior remodels for six fire stations within the city for a not to exceed amount of $407,872.66. In motion. Motion to approve the discussion. Need a second. second. Conversation. And I just want to thank uh, Chris. Uh, Director, do you and Chris want to come to the table for this one? Okay. Um, I just want to thank DPW Director and um, Chris and um, Ralph Sakura from the Firefighters Union for working through the concerns here with the Fire Administration as well. Um, I want to thank you all for working through the concerns because it's my understanding that you have reached some that Ralph is supportive and wants this to move forward. So could you talk a little bit about where the changes, what the changes were, and if there were not, um, how his uh, concerns would be addressed at a later date? I'm going to defer to Chris uh, okay. Horstein. Uh, he had the meeting Jim. on Friday with uh, with uh, the fire bureau and I, I can we can thank director for being here because i said since our director is the only one here could we take his committee first so <laughs> but uh could you introduce yourselves for the public as well uh, uh, mike abel director of public works thank you uh, chris hornstein assistant director of public works for facilities thank you now could you talk a little bit about the meetings and and what it, what it changes if there were any changes to the list uh, that you no heard? there were no yes we did meet with uh, ralph sakura the 
um, from the fire union along with Chief Alvo from Fire Command. And, um, you know, their concerns were around making sure that we were addressing all known issues and making sure that we were going to do this in a timely fashion um, because we were talking about displacing firefighters and that becomes a public safety concern. And so working with them and, and fire command, um, there, were some, there were some adjustments to our program and some things that they wanted us to look, look at in addition to, which we can easily accommodate around um, making sure that we were addressing um, bathroom issues, um, accessibility where it was appropriate and applicable, and um, the uh, accommodations for um, female bunking as well. And so we were, a were able to do all of that without um, impacting the scope of work um, that we presented before council today. Okay, good. And I just want to make sure because Councilwoman Harris is very concerned about her north side uh, uh, facility. So I think that she, uh, I'm done with my questions. I want to thank you very much because I know that you all worked through this really well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other conversation? So you know the conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's an A. Next paper, next paper, please. Bill 1637, Correct. resolution authorizing the mayor we'll and the up. director of the Department of Parks and the Department of Public Works to enter into a lease agreement with the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater for a portion of real property located on Liberty Avenue between 29th and 30th Street. Motion to approve. Yes, second. 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 Conversation. Um, this is, is this in your district, Councilwoman Gross? I'll defer to Councilwoman Gross. Thank you. So we've, I've had many discussions with the ballet and um, Director Gable about kind of what is proposed at Denny Park, but it's changed many times actually over the last couple of years. So I, I didn't get a briefing before this bill came up and I apologize um, for the things moving mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah, I, can you, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll let the director speak, but I might prefer. Sure, hold. I'll bring up the speed. Um, <clears throat> this is basically, um, uh, extending the lease so that they can uh, go to their funders and uh, raise the money that they need to show that there's a long-term agreement in order to improve Denny Park, which is right across the street. That's what runs between 29th and 30th streets. Um, they came to us prior with a conceptual plan, um, uh, which we were honestly not in favor of. It really does shrink the A park. parking structure. What's that? A parking structure was at one time proposed, which no, I was not, it's not in favor a, it, it's of. All, it's all great. Because there have been many conceptual plans. Oh, absolutely. But this last one really, really shrunk the green space and increased the parking, which we're not really in favor of. Right. We certainly understand that there is a parking need there, but we also want it to be uh, a very formidable green space. So um, they have not come back yet to uh, show us the, any uh, future designs. And it's all, also going to go through the community process. So. And so, yes, and so this current lease expires in 2025, if I'm reading this correctly. And so I'm not understanding why this bill is in front of us right now. Because they, again, to, to go out to their funders to raise money, the, the money they need to make the improvements the in the plan that we're not, that is not in place and hasn't had community process yet. Pardon me? But the, the, for their for a plan that doesn't exist, that hasn't had community process yet. And, That's it, correct. and Again, I keep in mind, I, I've kept in close touch with the ballet about this, and I have frequent conversations with them, but I'm not understanding the timing of this bill. Yeah, it's still, again, it's only just a, it been a conceptual plan. They have not come forth with a, a follow-up to that. They've gotten our previous comments. Uh, when we meet with them, we meet with Parks and all the players. Um, uh, so it, it's, it's still a conceptual design that's going to go through a community process. Um, well, we've all heard that before. Um, so I think a little, the card's a little bit before the horse here. So I'm going to ask for at least a two-week hold so we can okay. clarify some of these things. Motion to hold two weeks. Thank you. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's an aye. Next bill, please. Bill 1638, Holy resolution Jesus. authorizing the mayor <laughs> and the director of the Department of Public this Works kind of to enter into a professional thing. services agreement between the city and Foffman and Associate for Historic Preservation Architect consultation services for the Oliver Bathhouse at 38 South 10th Street at an amount not to exceed $44,990. Motion to approve. Second. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't wait for, didn't wait for the yeah. director for the chair to tell me. I, I just want to take a moment to thank the administration's continuing commitment to the to the historic nature of the Oliver Bathhouse and what it means to South Pittsburgh, uh, and uh, and your consideration again and again and again to provide for resources to ensure the preservation and the revitalization of the Oliver Bathhouse. Thank you. 
Welcome. Yeah, an RFP was done. Um, Fafnir was the uh, selected uh, uh, company, and uh, this is what it's going to take to look into keeping that historic structure in good An shape. amazing building. Yep. Thank you, Director. Welcome. Thank you. Any other conversation? See no other conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Next bill, please. Bill 1640. Thank you. Resolution authorizing Thank you, the mayor and the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure on behalf of the city to enter into a professional services agreement with consultant Eileen Papali mm. as a sole source to provide instruction to the new staff of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure at a cost not to exceed $15,000. Motion to approve. Second. Any conversation? No conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed is nay. Next bill, please. Bill 1641. Resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to execute relevant agreements to receive grant funding from the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation to provide support for Domi to build up an existing autonomous vehicle testing and a planned autonomous deployment by expanding public and neighborhood engagement efforts regarding how AVs are deployed and managed and further providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $410,539 for this stated purpose. Motion to hold uh, two weeks. And, and I just want to say I'm going to hold this for two weeks. We'd like for, I'd like for the director, it seems like there's people here that have some concerns that Honestly, it sounds like some of these concerns could be addressed. I don't think that we want to hold this indefinitely, and I think it's something we want to pass, but we at least want the residents to have an opportunity to talk with the director about the concerns that they have in the community. Um, I was born and raised in Oakland, and I know how important this is to that community. So I want to make sure that we're um, addressing any concerns that the residents may have to the best of our ability. So if the folks here would talk to the director um, and schedule a meeting, um, and we'll put it back on the agenda hopefully within two weeks. Any other conversation? There's a motion to hold for two weeks. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those are in May. Next bill, please. Bill 1642, resolution providing for a contract or use of existing contract and agreements, providing for the planning, design, repairs, maintenance, improvement, emergencies, operations, and or the purchase of materials, equipment, and supplies in connection with the production of the Hill District Mobility Network and Parking Management Plan and associated projects. Need a motion. Motion to approve with discussion. Need a second. Second. Do we have someone here to talk about this? Yeah. Councilman. Councilman. Councilman Lavelle, is there someone here uh, to talk about this? We were having a sad I'm sorry. conversation. Sorry. Is there someone here to discuss this bill? Um, 1642 at the bottom of page. Oh, fully supportive. This is around the fact that between redevelopment of the Middle Hill, redevelopment of the Lower Hill, we need to do an assessment. We put money in the budget, so this is now allocating those dollars to do an assessment of all the mobility challenges to the Greater Hill District, including parking, busing, traffic control, etc. And there'll be a there'll be um, yes a public process. There'll be a lot of community public public yes. meetings. Gross. Thank you. I just want to uh, say I'm really supportive of having represented the Strip District while it densified and added thousands of new dwellings and thousands of new offices. That's exactly what is go ongoing right now is a total demand management plan, I think is the regular term for trying to figure out what freight comes in, what goods and wares come in and out, what employees come in and out, how residents get in and out, kind of like all of the mobility, everything that's moving, and what should the routing of pedestrian needs, how do, should that be met, and how to do it in a way that serves the actual residents. So I'm, I'm really happy to see this, and I'm fully supportive. Any other conversation? No other conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Close this next. That completes the... Um, I believe that completes please committee. We can go back to the front of the agenda um, to the finance law committee, which I am the chair. We have a, um, a supplemental paper. Bill 1654, resolution amending resolution number 98, which authorized the issuing of a warrant in favor of Tabitha Workmeister on behalf of her guardian and her minor children and Greenwich Dion Wilson in an amount not to exceed $80,000 by changing the issuant to four warrants as follows in favor of Tabitha Workmeister, 
the amount of $30,000 and in favor of land offices of Timothy O'Brien in the amount of $39,990 in settlement of litigation per order of court of the U.S. District Court of the Western District of Pennsylvania in favor of Tabitha, Tabitha Workmeister in the amount of $5,005 and in favor of Greenwich Dion Wilson in the amount of $5,005 in settlement of litigation as described in the full and final general release and settlement agreement between the parties. Um, I need a motion. Motion to approve, very brief discussion. Second. I need a second. second. Discussion, discussion. Second. Ms. Harris. Okay. Well, Mr. Yeah, Cross, I just, I, is someone from law here to speak to this? If I understand this correctly, is the, the amount hasn't changed, it's the dispersal that has changed from one person to four people, I think, is what this is saying. I think maybe we just need someone from law for a moment to explain. All right, if you have some, if you have call someone from the law to come in, we will continue while we wait. Uh, we have uh, two new papers and we can read them together. Bill 1635, resolution authorizing the issuing of a warrant in the amount of $7,700 to Davenport and Company LLC for professional consulting services in relation to police arbitration. Bill number 1636, resolution authorizing the issuing of a warrant in the amount of $16,350 to MAS Financial Advisory Services LLC for professional consulting services in relation to police arbitration. Need a motion to hold for executive session. So moved. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers, nay. All right, that takes us to um, the invoices. I need a motion for the invoices. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, invoices on the table. Any concerns, questions about the invoices? No concerns about the invoices. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers, nay. Um, that takes us to um, there are no it are no interdepartmental transfers. There are P cards. P cards are on the table. I need a motion for the P cards. So moved. Is there a second? second? All those in favor of the P card motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's nay. All right, that takes us to, I believe, page six, uh, which is Land Use and Economic Development Committee, Ms. Gross is the chair. We have a deferred paper. Bill 1492. Resolution approving a conditional use application under the Pittsburgh Code Title IX, Zoning Article 5 for West Liberty Elementary School for authorization to expand an elementary secondary school at 785 Dunster Street, Zone R1DM, Residential Single Unit Detached Moderate Density District, 19th Ward, Council District Number 4. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is a second? Second. Any conversation? No conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers, nay. That takes us to the Inter uh, Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management Committee. Ms. Strasburger is the chair. We have a new paper. Bill 1639, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure and or the Department of Innovation and Performance on behalf of the city to enter into an agreement with various entities in order to receive data sets or access to data sets or vis visualization platforms that further the city's ability to deliver services to residents. I need a motion. Mo motion to discuss. <laughs> approve very brief discussion. Second. Second discussion. All right, Ms. Cross. I don't think we I understand what it. this means. Yeah. Is Are this you so here, Director? Oh, good. Oh, director great. is here. Yeah. Thanks, Director. She will come and explain it to us. Thanks, Director. Good morning. Next to Good morning. Good morning. Good Welcome. Morning. Thank you. So I'm Karina Rex, the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. Um, so basically what this allows us to do is that there's various um, uh, data. Data is being collected, as we know, of, uh, about all of us all the time, the way that we travel, the way that we uh, go um, from entities such as Waze, which I'm sure many of you use. Um, uh, that information um, is available to um, various platforms for analysis purposes. It's all anonymized. It's all scrubbed of any kind of personal identification. Um, that information can be used for planning purposes as we um, look at where are areas of congestion, where are areas uh, that are that are that are um, 
um, uh, where we're having different kinds of, of issues or, or lines. Um, that information ha uh, is offered to us as a municipality to use. It has certain terms and conditions that we need to agree to um, in order to engage in those agreements. That's one example um, of the entities that have data. You approved um, uh, close to eight months or so ago the City of Tomorrow uh, challenged the work that we did with Ford Motor Company. Um, that uh, work that they did for us generated um, uh, some different data sets. Again, all of these have uh, terms of use and conditions that we would need to um, sign on to in order to uh, access those data sets for our own analysis purposes, for our own validation and, and use so that we don't have to continually pay others to acquire and use data sets and do analysis for us. Um, so this would allow us then to just have these data sets um, in the city. Um, they are, would all be made available to the Western Pennsylvania um, Regional Data Center and are all um, in line with the open data policy um, that we have. Again, they, that what this uh, legislation would allow us to do is just to um, sign those agreements so that we can, as a city, have access to the data that others all around us have access to. So it's to accept and receive data for use. For use. Without yeah. any personal detail attached to no, it. No, it's all anonymized. It's right. all, yes. Right. It's and there's no cost associated with no it because we don't have the sort of the supplemental thing. So there's no cost associated Correct. with this it. Correct. This is not to buy data. This gotcha. is just to, to, to allow us to engage in the agreements that are right. necessary to make this to, to give us access to these data portals and to acquire these data sets. So to enter into the agreements uh, by which you'll be able to use the, the data for different functions. Okay. I'm okay with this then, I think. I'm fine. Thank you for explaining. Harris. Yes, could you give us some examples on how you will be using this? So Waze is probably, you know, one of the better examples of where we would be able to look at different times of day, different delays. Um, that are occurring on our street network if we're trying to understand um, what are some of the problems that uh, we're experiencing in different segments that we would then be able to look at that. We would be able to feed information to um, them around uh, things like road closures. So when we have different development projects or hypothetically major water main breaks on certain corridors, um, that we would be able to, to put that information into ways as a city um, and have that then uh, feed into their algorithm and draw that kind of information back down. So if PWSA or if other actors are, are able to put that information in, we would be able to bring that information down again. Maybe we run a historic analysis that says how often have we experienced these kinds of um, disruptions in these critical corridors? What did that lead to in terms of travel time delay? Um, other kinds of issues, so we would be able to then have access to that historic record. Um, it's just useful for our analysis and planning purposes to be able to tap into these resources um, that, that, that are being gathered, whether we, we want them to or not, they are being gathered, um, and this then helps us then do um, more responsible planning. So would that also be such as accidents maybe in certain areas? So we already have uh, access to the, the state uh, crash uh, database that um, is there. Okay. We would not be able to get the, the information. So, so that is an official um, record that is taken because, sure, yeah. yeah, you need to, to have it from the, the law enforcement officers and others that are there. Um, that is a little bit of a different flavor than what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is more of kind of the private data sets that are being gathered. Um, as opposed to that as a state um, database that we already have access to by virtue of being a public entity. So most of this will be about mobile, not such as what the street looks like at all, and why? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that just quickly so I understand the How question? a street would look and why, such as well, the sidewalk and the street? Presumably we could. So for example, there are different companies around um, robotics. There are others that, that, are the, that are autonomous vehicles that are, that are roaming the street, are gathering data about the street. Um, if they were able to make that available to us again at no cost, because this is really just dealing with those 
um, that we would be able that they would open up to us at no cost. Um, that's one where we might be able to uh, garner information about exactly how wide is our street, how tall are those curbs, um, because they're they're collecting lidar 3D, 3D data about our street. That would be an extremely helpful data set to know to see you know where we may be vulnerable to to flooding issues. I know the the the, the uh, council people at this end of the table very concerned about where we. Uh, don't have, and, and Councilman Kelsman, where we don't have adequate curb reveal. Um, that is not a data set that is under consideration here, but that's a, for example, there is that data being collected out in the world um, right now by private actors. If they were to make that available to us as a public entity, we would want to have um, the authority to engage in that agreement in order to use that for the benefit of the, the people of, the, of Pittsburgh. So since nothing was agreed upon, signed agreed upon with such as Uber, right. uh, and they've been taking in all this information, uh, will the city be able to receive that information that if, if they made that avail, if there was a format in which this doesn't give us any sort of authority to forcibly extract data. Um, but you would think but that if they, since but they've used our streets, correct, that, you that would information would come to us. If they offered that information up, there is, um, for example, an entity called Open Streets mm -hmm. that gathers those kinds of uh, that data about how many people are getting into or getting out of a rideshare vehicle on a particular block face. So that would help us to map that this block face is very busy for that kind of stopping, starting and stopping activity, which can be problematic for buses, can be problematic for others um, who are using that street. Um, that is a data set that does exist that we, you know, if we're authorized to engage in those data agreements through this legislation, that is one that we could tap into. It's not specifically Uber, it's anonymized across the different um, uh, transportation network company um, um, uh, trips that they take. But that would be, again, a very useful data set for us to have to be able to do analysis about uh, are they using, uh, in that case, the, the data is uh, anonymized down to 10-foot segments of a linear block? Mm -hmm. So we would be able to see, are they legally or illegally using bus stops as um, TNC drop-off pickup areas? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be important to know, because if we have a very busy bus stop that is being hindered because of, because of this kind of activity that's going on, that would help us to recognize that that is a demand that we probably need to accommodate and if we can accommodate it someplace away from where that bus stop is we can serve that need and facilitate um, the movement of transit um, but that would be a for instance of those would be the kind of data sets that we would want to be able to tap into and use okay and my last question is will it be able to sh show now of when we block off streets, mm -hmm. such as around Allegheny Center Mall, uh, and we have New Allegheny there, a way to allow those people to get out if Correct. needed. Yep, that would be, yeah, a classic case. I was uh, happening to, to, to drive last night, and I was using uh, Google Maps to, to guide me, and it mm -hmm. told me that I should... Uh, travel inbound on Liberty Avenue and turn left on 7th Avenue, which I'm sorry to tell everyone you cannot do right now because we're restoring the bricks right. on Liberty Avenue, but that mapping application was telling me that that's what I should do. I happened to know the, the way to get around that because I have this role in the city, but if I was a visitor, um, that would really be, that would throw me off because the map is telling me to turn. I don't know my way around the city and I don't know where it's going to take me if I can't turn. So again, this would allow us to, to kind of improve that interface um, so that since we are often blindly following what our Google Voice tells us to do, um, we'd like that Google Voice to at least be telling people correctly what they should be doing. Thank you. Um, yeah. The other, Ms. Gross. Thank you. Um, Director, thank you um, for thinking about um, and wanting to, I think, start this conversation to 
you know, inform us with better data, right? Which is, I see as the end goal here, right? There's a, we know that the data exists that would help us make better budgeting decisions, better infrastructure decisions, use the public dollars, you know, for the most good um, possible, but we don't have access to that data. Um, I really do uh, love the, the prospect of having better information so that we don't spend money unwisely or spend it twice, all those kinds of things. I, I want to say, though, I am not happy with the way this bill is worded, that it gives carte blanche authorization to kind of various entities about various things at various times, basically in perpetuity. Um, and what I prefer to see is, um, even if you came back with an exhibit that said, I think you know, right, that you're not going to be doing conversations with some companies first, that you're going to be doing with conversations with other companies first. Um, and I would like to see an authorization to engage in those conversations with those entities. I would like to see an end date. Uh, and I would also like to see, um, a, 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 I think, better language. The text file is very thin, right? The actual full legislative language. Um, for example, I guarantee that this is um, or addressing whether or not this is subject to our own open data legislation, right? So I'm not sure how much better it is that the data is now someplace where we can't see it, um, as, as you, or the administration can't see it in the hands of private companies, uh, but then to be held in the administration's hands. I'm, I'm not sure what the public benefit is. Well, so I, to that last point, I think that the open data legislation already covers that requirement. So if that data were to come into the into the public into domain, the public into, that mm -hmm. it would already be under mm -hmm. um, the requirements mm -hmm. of the open data. Because I, I, and I'll so, just speak to that in a minute. We've seen real public benefit in the last four years or so that the Western Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania Regional Data Center, did I say that correctly, mm -hmm. um, has been up and we have been sharing um, information from both the city administration and authorities and being able to merge it with other levels of government, social data from the federal government, et cetera. It's really been a bonus to making better policy, I think. And we've seen um, uh, the, the public has helped us, right? The people who aren't on our payroll are having access to that data have been able to inform us. So we've made better, wiser, smarter decisions about what to do and, and, what, and spending dollars. And so I see the opportunity here. But I, again, I think this is way too vague for me. Um, and I would like to see, you know, uh, legislation that says we authorize you to engage in these conversations about these things during this time frame, um, and then get some reporting back to to address it. Yeah, I, that's understandable. I think our concern is that, and, and why it is purposely written in a broad way, um, is that there are innumerable data generators right now. Um, Great, and then and once you figure some of them out, you can come back for other ones. I think you have an idea of where you're going to start. Um, and I would be very supportive of voting to, to allow you to start with those, whatever those are. Even if you had to bring it back, as I said, with an attachment. This is reminding me of the kind of carte blanche telecom bill that we had a few years ago. What was like, well, you know, we're under the gun. We need to, we need to negotiate, the administration said it wasn't this director, with telecom companies to allow them to do distributed antenna systems. And we said, no, 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 that's, that's, we, we don't know what you're, you know, we could be unleashing thousands of installations across the city. But really, all they needed to do to satisfy compliance issues with the feds was to start with, I think, 10. And they knew where those were, and we just attached them as Exhibit A, and we got started. Um, and it, it worked for the administration, and it also worked, I think, to protect the public interest. Right. I, again, I, I think there's a lot of distinctions in this, is that the, this data is already being collected about our residents, I understand about that. habits. And I this understand is, that. It's been if going anything, this is allowing us to be a little bit more nimble so that we can that, daylight that I'm that not going to vote to give you carte blanche. Okay. That's all. Thank you. A anyone else? All right. So, um, Director, this is something you think you need? Uh, we do believe that we need this, that this can let us uh, and let our public know uh, when it is possible what kind of data is being generated and let us factor that into our decision making. Okay. Again, this is the, 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 the data and tech world is, is, is very fast and um, so this, we think that this, again, the, the administration 
will be um, looking out for the, the, the public interest. Obviously, that's what we want also, and have that responsibility um, the same. So. Oh, um, Director, you know I have the highest confidence in you. Um, I will say something um, publicly that I've said only privately is um, you're one of the first directors who came to my office and said to me that your concern was about equity and diversity, that my council district in many ways had not received its fair share of services. Even though I had been saying this for 10 years, you actually confirmed that to me in a private meeting. And, and it really was about equity and diversity. Um, and I am extraordinarily impressed with your insight and professionalism and commitment to our city and to the communities I represent. So typically, if you come to the table, I'm going to trust your judgment. And this is one of those times. So I will urge my colleagues, although I think I hear the, the, the hesitancy, I think this is a time when we, we go forward. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? No. All right. And so positive recommendation. Um, that takes us to um, you, the last Thank bill. You. Thank you very much, Director. That takes us to the last bill of the day, which is the Intergovernmental Affairs Committee. Pardon me? We have the attorney here. Oh, that's, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, we can go back. We can go to him then. I was going to go to you last, but okay. Um, let me finish what I'm doing. All right. Okay. Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, Mr. Connor is the chair. We have a supplemental paper. Bill 1660, resolution authorizing the city to enter into a second amendment to agreement, a second amendment to agreement of November 1st, 1950, with the Allegheny County Sanitation Authority, the Township of Upper St. Clair, Peters Township, Peters Township Sanitary Authority, and Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority. In a motion, Mr. Carnage. Motion approved, brief discussion. Second. Mr. Carnage. Yes, this was approved by uh, Alcasan as well as PWSA. Um, this is just a transfer um, agreement that we have with Upper St. Clair and obviously Peters Township when the water comes in through the system. This is something because it was written in 1950 that we just have to amend to adapt this agreement to it. All right, that's simple technical, Ms. Harris. Somebody here to talk about this? Uh, no, I mean, I can get you any info you need, but it, it was approved by both boards. It's more technical that we just have to approve it because in 1950, all these agreements have to come through council. Right, so it seems but also in 1950 is, is when no one in any of these areas had to pay for uh, anything of a user fee. Ms. Harris? Yes. So you have a, a couple of choices. Um, I would prefer us just to pass it if there is if there is no if there is a problem you can certainly contact someone between now and Tuesday and if you're not satisfied we can always recommit. Right? There's a motion to approve on the table. Okay. I would ask that Corey uh, get a hold of somebody so we can have a meeting. I, I can't hear yeah. what you're I mean, what just tell me what you need to know. I need to know about, you know, we're making some changes here. And uh, there's a lot of changes that we should make since 1950, such as user fees and being able to look into that. So you want to know what user fees are? No, there aren't any. There should be. Right, but this is, okay, we'll go offline. Uh, okay. Any other conversation? Seeing no conversation, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers, nay. We have a deferred paper. One abstention. We have deferred paper. Bill 983, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Finance to execute a quick claim deed in any other necessary or appropriate documents, agreements, and instruments conveying as is all of the city's right, title, and interest, if any, in designated city-owned properties to the URA for consideration of $1 each, contingent upon the mayor and director of the Department of Finance, first entering into a corporation agreement with the URA, setting forth the rights and obligations of the city and the URA relating to these initial conveyances and further setting forth the rights and obligations of the city and the URA relating to the subsequent disposition of these properties to third parties. I uh, need a motion, Mr. Gold. Motion to hold three weeks. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor, since five by saying aye. 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 Those there's nay. Next bill, please. I just want to yep. say on 1660, I'm an abstention. So noted. So there's two. Next bill, please. Bill 1621, resolution authorizing the mayor, the Office of Management and Budget, 
and the Department of Public Works to enter into a professional service agreement with Oxford Development Company to serve as property manager for the 412 Boulevard of the Allies. Need a motion, Mr. Connor. Motion to hold one week. Second. All those in favor, send five by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. This takes us to the hearings committee. Mr. Cross, Cross is the chair, and my understanding is the person has withdrawn, so we need a motion to withdraw Bill 1644. Motion to withdraw. Uh, you need to read it, though, don't you, Madam Clerk? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. Bill 1644. <laughs> Resolution appointing Theodore Lohner as a commissioner of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission of the City of Pittsburgh for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. Cross. Motion to withdraw. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers, nay. That exhausts the agenda except for the open bill. If you would please come forward to talk about bill 1654 which uh, has already been read a motion to discuss is on the table miss harris has the floor thank you can you break this down and tell me what it's for and why so because it goes into different amounts here so the total that would be giving to each and why right and so the total amount is still eighty thousand dollars which has not changed from when the resolution was passed a few months ago um, there's a need to my understanding is there's a need to conform and to specify the distribution of that total right. amount which is it's still just, the same among the parties to the litigation to the plaintiffs to the litigation per an order from the federal court and, and also because of a, another court order um, that relates to one of the adult plaintiffs who is um can you explain what we're talking about first sure so this is um this is a settlement of a civil rights lawsuit that was um had to do with a um police swat raid on a residence that um lawsuit alleged that was a violation of the plaintiff's fourth amendment rights um we litigated the lawsuit somewhat and then agreed to resolve it um, by mutual agreement. Um, and so the because some of the plaintiffs were minor children, were, you right. know, um, the federal court I issued an order um, specifying certain amounts to be paid. For the minors. And, correct. And approved, oh, okay. you know, basically okay. taking special care for those children. And so... My understanding is there is then a need to call those amounts, amounts out specifically in this amendment, which is mm -hmm. what it does. Okay. Um, That's and, all I need. Okay. The other conversation. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, there's nay. That exhausts our agenda. Is there any other conversation from members? Good luck next week. Everybody. If there's been no conversation from members due to the primary elections next week, council's regular meeting will be Monday, May 20th at 10 a.m. The Standing Committee's meeting will be Wednesday, May 22nd at 10 a.m. There will be no meetings Tuesday, May 21st. Also next week on Monday, May 20th, point me at 1.30, Council will hold a cablecast public hearing on Bill 2019-1599 as it relates to a historic designation of the Southside Presbyterian Church. I will now entertain a motion to excuse the absent member, approve the minutes, and adjourn the meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers nay. We are adjourned. Aye.